All right, Ronan MMA, welcome back to the channel. Now, I understand I am not the first person to bring up this story, and uh, it's not exactly breaking news, but Mike Perry and Luke Rockhold are set to face off in bare-knuckle boxing. This is insane to me. I'm going to give my reaction to this and talk about who I think could potentially win and why. But before we do, please like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. I will thank you in advance for your subscription, because I know that you're not going to be the kind of person that doesn't do the thing that they've already been thanked for, because that would just be rude, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. Now let's just get into it. Mike Perry and Luke Rockhold, as I said, are going to face off in BKFC or whatever at middleweight also, which is notable because Mike Perry did his UFC career at 170, whereas Luke Rockhold did the vast majority of his career at 185 at middleweight, but at one point in time did go up to 205 pounds and is a giant 185er. Anyways, even if he, you know, he his light heavyweight stint or whatever didn't go very well. He got KO'd by Jan Blachowicz, but first of all, it's Jan Blachowicz, so it's understandable. And second of all, despite him not fighting up there more, he was he's a giant man at 185 pounds. Now, this is a very interesting matchup, and I have to be honest, Luke Rockhold is probably the last fighter that left the UFC that I would have ever expected to go do bare knuckle boxing. This guy's middle name is Skyler. Okay. When you are born and raised in like Santa Cruz, California, that's the kind of name you have. First of all, Luke White and Skyler, even whiter. Luke Skyler Rockhold. That's insane to me, but that's fine. Um, He's also just like the model slash like pretty boy dude. Like I'm not saying I'm attracted to him, but you know what I mean? He had like the Ralph Lauren deal or whatever it was. Ralph Lauren. I don't know how you're supposed to say that word, but um dude and then you got on the other hand mike perry who is like the exact opposite of that would probably never get a modeling gig ever in his entire life doesn't know anything other than he wants to beat people up and you know he's just a savage and also it's strange because he's not a big welterweight so maybe he just doesn't want to cut weight and then luke rock holds all for cutting weight but it's a weird one. And now, if you've if you've seen the thumbnail, you'll notice that over top of Mike Perry in the corner with his broken nose, I put has taken a lot of damage. That's a little misleading. Mike Perry has taken a lot of surface level damage. Okay, meaning things that we can see, injuries that we can see, cuts, bruises, broken nose, things of that nature, things that fighters typically get. Right. But if you look at their careers. Mike Perry has only ever been finished one time, and it was a TKO, not even a KO, and it was Jeff Neal head kicked him. And it was a brutal head kick. But that's what it takes to put Mike Perry away. You know what I mean? Other than that, never finished. Or never stopped with strikes anyways. I don't think he has been finished other than that, though. Um, and so, yeah, surface level damage. Whereas on the other hand, you've got a guy in Luke Rockhold who has never not lost by TKO or KO. That's the only way he's ever lost, okay? Vitor knocked him out. Bisping knocked him out. Well, sorry, his one decision loss was to Paulo Costa his last time out, which was a phenomenal fight, but Yoel Romero knocked him out. Jan Blachowicz knocked him out. There was a guy before Vitor Belfort in his early career that knocked him out as well. I can't remember what the name what the name is right now, but all of his losses, every single one, has been by KO or TKO, except for the Paulo Costa fight. So, in term, if you were to just show somebody like the injuries that Mike Perry's had compared to Luke Rockhold and what he's looked like after fights, I mean, the Yoel Romero punch or the Omblahovich one actually looked like he'd broken his jaw, but I don't know if he did. Um, it might have just been the, mouth, the mouthpiece shifting. But that nose injury is like one of the worst I've ever seen. That was one of the worst nose breaks I've ever seen. That was horrible, horrible, horrible stuff. And he still has a nasty scar right here. Like, you can see that while the doctor did a pretty good job, he did not do a perfect job. Or he probably did it as perfect as he possibly could. But his nose was so on the other side of his face that it... Dude. Mangled. Makes Jack Dallamedalena's nose look normal. Um... But in terms of, like, head trauma, I would argue that Luke Rockhold has suffered much more head trauma. Luke Rockhold is also 
again, top, we're talking, this is technically a surface level injury, but he does a good job at hiding it. And unless you are a hardcore MMA fan who's been watching for a long time, you might not know that Luke Rockhold has suffered from staph infection pretty badly and frequently. Like he can't, he couldn't, what the fuck, dude, couldn't seem to, uh, to get rid of it. And he, to the point where like his skin was eating itself kind of like he's got a nasty or had a nasty gash on his shin in the Jan Blachowicz fight you can see that he has it wrapped up he had that that initial staph infection was like came about years before the Jan Blachowicz fight so it was just reoccurring he couldn't seem to get rid of it and it was screwing him up and again for those of you that don't know I'm sure a lot of you do but antibiotics can fuck with your system quite a bit and they can wipe you out like they can make you fatigued brain fog, all this stuff, you can't train as hard, whatever. And a guy who's consistently had staph infection has also consistently been on antibiotics, which is not good, because not just those things that I mentioned, but they kill all of the probiotics, if I'm not mistaken. Like, they kill everything antibiotics do. So it affects your gut health, which then affects you healing, which it, like, because your gut health is pretty important. So it's he's had a he's had not the best luck okay in terms of uh terms of career injuries but a lot of them as i said are like not necessarily surface level a staph infection is surface level but he does a good job at hiding it it's not right on his face where we can see it you know what i mean also dude this is a big factor luke rockhold a huge 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 part of his game are his kicks, you know, while he can hit guys with his punches, that's not his bread and butter, and his boxing, if we're being honest, is not the best, it's just not, his kicks are what, like, his kicks are his specialty, his round kick to the body off the back leg is very, very, very powerful, he, like, spammed it against Paulo Costa there, hitting him to the body over again, He's got spin kicks, like wheel kicks. His question mark kick, while a little telegraphed, is a lot harder than a l most other question mark kicks. I've seen a lot of guys can throw a nice question mark kick, um, but they're not necessarily the most powerful kick. The knockout comes from the fact that your opponent didn't see it coming, and it kind of comes over the shoulder. And obviously placement has a lot to do with it, but if you've ever tried to throw one, You've got to have like really flexible hips in order to create enough torque on the turnover because you're going up and then around. So it's a lot of movement. It's not like a direct straight line. So the power does get diminished a little bit. But Luke Rockhold's is hard as shit. Okay. He throws hard, hard question mark kicks. Um, and the spinning back kick to the body, we saw him land on Paulo Costa as well. Leg kicks he throws. Like he's got, he's got hard kicks, but that's gonna, he can't use any of that. And I would argue that I think Mike Perry is probably more likely to hurt him with his hands than he is to hurt Mike Perry. Because while Mike Perry's taken a lot of surface damage, he's only got that one TKO loss by head kick. The guy's got a fucking chin on him. Like, he's tough as nails. And if we're being honest, I thought he kind of got robbed in that fight. I think that was against Vicente Luque. I could be mistaken. Where the, the nose the nose thing happened um hold on one sec i'll look that up quickly bright 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 tim means jeff neil vicente luke yeah dude split decision it, i i thought he won that fight and i was a little disappointed for him and i thought that that last sequence because that if for those of you that don't remember that nose thing occurred at, towards the very end of the fight like literally in the last minute and after that vicente luke was like kind of squeezing him going for uh might have been a guillotine or something like that but he didn't have it but just from the squeeze blood started shooting and you could see it across his face and you went oh fuck so i don't know it, it was a close fight either way which is crazy because vicente luke is really good and uh yeah mike perry dude you can't put that guy away well you can but you got to be jeff neal and you got to head kick him first <laughs> But you ain't putting him... Dude, that was a knee that did that. Put his nose across his fucking face. And he did not quit. He did not even go down. The dude is a savage, man. And also, in terms... I might even lean more towards Luke Rockhold if this was like a boxing match. Right? With gloves and shit. 
Not bare knuckle though, dude. Mike Perry, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Luke, dude, Mike Perry is a fucking animal. Like, he might not, he's like probably got some Neanderthal gene in him. He has to. I know he's African, but that ain't doing what, what, Mike Perry's different, dude. Different. Like, he's built different in that regard. Not necessarily his fighting abilities, right? Like, he, and you know, also his choice in coaches is probably not the greatest, his pregnant girlfriend, but. A lot of Luke Rockhold's reach advantage that he had over, but which he did have reach advantages over a lot of opponents, but the way that he would keep people at bay at the reach that he wanted them to be kept at was with kicks. And we've seen that guys with power hooks or even just power punches in general that are willing to kind of throw themselves in there and close the distance, they can get it done. I mean, I know Yoel Romero is Yoel Romero, but he flatlined that boy. And he had to eat some leg kicks to do it. Mike Perry ain't going to have to eat leg kicks, dude. And when you've got a guy in Luke Rockhold who kind of has a tendency to get knocked out. And then you've got a guy who can't get knocked out unless he gets fucking head kicked. And you're not allowed to throw kicks. I mean, I am shocked that Luke Rockhold took this fight. But I applaud him for it. I, You know, he was one of those guys for most of his career that you didn't necessarily like. He was kind of a douchebag. That last fight with Paulo Costa, though, man, and the way that he handled the post-fight interview and, and all that stuff, he kind of won me over a bit. And I thought, damn, dude, why couldn't you have been more like this, you know, during your, uh, like, the prime of your career? But it was probably just an ego thing. And I think that with age, like, you know, he's mellowed out and, and whatever. And I don't know. But he won me over there. So I'm not like hoping that one guy wins or the other guy doesn't or anything like that. I'm just curious to see what would happen. I would probably, if I'm being honest, just because of the circumstances, the limited rule set, the damage that they've taken over time, I would probably go with Mike Perry here. I would also argue that they're probably both going to be a little juicy, if you know what I mean. So maybe that will play a factor. Maybe Ru uh, Luke Rockhold will be able to recover a lot of the stuff. But, you know, he's his chin's probably not the greatest uh, anymore. So that's a worry for him, in my opinion, anyways. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And don't be giving me shit for picking Mike Perry here, because think about all the things that I just said. Luke Rockhold can't throw kicks. Okay, He's been knocked out fucking five or six times. And it's bare knuckle. Mike Perry is the kind of guy I would think would be fighting bare knuckle. Luke Rockhold is not that kind of guy. You know? But, hey, it is what it is. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Who do you think will win? How do you think they will win? Are you surprised by this matchup? Are you not surprised? Um, yeah, anyways, see you later.